Welcome back. This is part two of the VIC-20 repair series where I'll try and bring you up to date with a few things I've tried off camera and we'll see if we can't make a little bit more progress. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. I had a suggestion that the machine would still work if it was going to with the 4066 removed and the RAM at UD2 removed. So I thought that was worth a try just to, to try and eliminate those parts. Uh, I had already removed the 4066 in a previous video and I tested that off the board in uh, a couple of testers that I've got and it, it came up okay. I removed UD2 but that actually made things worse. Uh, the machine was uh, completely dead, um, no activity on the buses at all. Then I realized the obvious that UD2 is part of the first 1K of RAM, which includes zero page, the stack, and the things that the 6502 needs to actually work. Um, so without that, the processor was no doubt starting up and immediately crashing. So I proceeded to drop a socket in uh, the UD2 position, put the RAM chip back in, and, uh, and moved on. I then proceeded to remove the 2114 at UE1, which is the RAM associated with the 4066. Um, bit zero to three on the data bus do look a bit better with it removed, so maybe it was part of the problem. But even with the chip removed, I believe it should still power up and just give me a, a composite video signal with bogus color information, but it doesn't. Uh, I'm still not getting anything out of pins two and three on the VIC chip. It's yeah, dead as a doornail. So next cab off the rank, I'm gonna connect the the uh, logic analyzer to the VIC chip. Um, see if the CPU is even trying to uh, to write to the registers on startup. Um, I've only got a 16 channel logic analyzer, so I, I don't have enough inputs to do the address lines and the data lines. So there's a few compromises we're gonna have to make here, but we'll see how we go. And, and I say try and connect the logic analyzer because I don't have any of those fancy dip clips that that clip nicely onto the top of the, the chips and allow you to easily connect the logic analyzer. Um, mine just has those flimsy little um, clips that go onto the, the legs of the ICs directly and they, they like to fall off about as quickly as you put them on. So uh, this is gonna be interesting. Let's see how we go. So the logic analyzer is connected to the board. I have channel zero connected to the CPU's reset line so I can see when the process is actually running. Uh, channel 1 is connected to the processor's read-write line, so I can see when it's reading or writing. And channels 2 through 14 are connected to uh, A0 through to A12. And channel 15 is connected to the, uh, the block 4 signal from the uh, address decoding. Um, so collectively I can use those signals to work out when the VIC chip's been written to. So, looking at the protocol analyzer software, we obviously set the triggers, just a simple trigger here. Um, so we want the reset line to be high, so the process is running. Read write to be low, so we want to see when it's writing. And then we don't care about address line zero, one, two, three, and four, because that's where the, the various registers for the VIC chip live in, in that range. So any value in that range is okay. Then we want uh, low, 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 uh, low, 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 and then we want high, and then block four is, it's, it's, block, it's bar block four, or block four bar, so it's active low. So when block four is selected, that's the memory between 8009 FFF, which is where the VIC chip is mapped into. So we'll click start to start the capture, turn the computer on. And we're capturing data. And it's just downloading, so I'll turn the machine back off. Right, and here's our capture from the protocol analyzer. So we'll add a decoder to it. We'll use a generic parallel decoder. 
and data line zero will be input two, three, four, five, six, oops, I'll fix that in a minute, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this is thirteen. 14 and then we can skip these two and this is 15. Uh, we skip these two because they're implied by the state of the input on 15 you know, because of the, the way the decoding is is working. So decode and it's slowly working on that. It's you see up here in the corner it's uh, working its way through decoding that. If we zoom in, we can see what it's coming up with. So in here we can put 100, because we're actually looking for 1000, 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, and so on, where the, the registers live. So we'll have a bit of a search. And about 50 milliseconds in, our read-write line is low. So this is a write to 100E. And there's a right to 100D, 100C, B, A, 9. All right, so it looks like there are register rights to the VIC chip happening. Um, I am surprised they're in that order. I, I would have expected them to start at 1000 and go upwards, but I, I don't know how the the initialization code actually works in the VIC-20. Um, might have to have a look at that in a minute and uh, and see if what we're seeing here in the logic analyzer matches what the uh, the kernel actually does. So I've got a disassembly of the VIC-20 kernel ROM here and this is the routine that initializes the VIC chip as it says. Um, and indeed it starts with an index of 16 which is the number of registers that the, uh, the VIC chip has and it reads from its setup table, writes the, uh, the register, decrements the X or the index register, and if we're not zero, it goes back. So, yep, it's fully expected that it's going to write the registers in the VIC chip in reverse order, and that matches what we're seeing in the logic analyzer. So at this point, I'm fairly comfortable that the CPU is at least writing to the VIC chip, and the VIC chip is getting the, uh, the address lines that it's expecting to, um, to select itself, because the, the VIC chip doesn't have a chip select line as such, it, it just looks at the address lines and decodes them internally at a, at a fixed address. Of course, I can't tell what the data is that's being written to the VIC chip. It, it's possible that the process is going through and are writing to the right register addresses, but the data's getting corrupted on the way through, and what's actually getting written to the registers is completely bogus. Um, so I'm going to have to have a think about how I can use my 16-channel logic analyzer to capture enough of the address information and the, uh, the data that's actually being written to the registers. Well, I had a bit of a ponder on how I might uh, look at what, what data is going into the VIC chip with the analyzer. I, I haven't come up with any, uh, any great ideas on that one. Um, in parallel, um, I've managed to find an NTSC VIC chip online, which I've ordered and I've got that on the way. So one option we'll have will be to uh, to replace the VIC chip in this machine and, and see if that makes any difference. Uh, looking at the, the postal tracking, that looks like that's probably another at least a week, maybe two weeks away. So we might put the VIC-20 to the side for the moment and uh, look at something else for the next uh, video or two and come back to it when the, uh, when the VIC chip arrives. So hopefully this video was interesting. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get the issue resolved, but eh, maybe, we're a, maybe we're a step closer. Anyway, until next time, cheers.